Hello soon to be licensed nurse practitioners. Miss Cohen here and welcome to another blog with the Cohen Review. Today, we're going to be going over the basics of cancer, including cancer staging. Because it's important for nurse practitioners to understand cancer staging in order to provide quality care. It is vital in decision making, education, and in collaboration with other healthcare providers. Nurse practitioner boards consider cancer staging an essential topic, so they're likely to appear on the exams. Let's review. First, what is cancer? Well, cancer happens because there's a disruption in the DNA of the cells. The DNA pretty much is a recipe on how to make the cell. So if there's something wrong with the recipe, there will be something wrong with the outcome, the cell, and the cell will not function properly. That's cancer. That's malignancy. Now, cancer has a tendency to grow uncontrollably and has the ability to spread to other parts of the body. So what causes cancer? Well, it could be genetic, meaning it gets carried over from generation to generation, grandparents to parents to children. It could also be environmental exposure to carcinogens or cancer-causing agents, such as smoking cigarettes, asbestos, and even uh, exposure to the sunlight, such as with skin cancer. And sometimes it's idiopathic, meaning we don't know why it happens. So what is a tumor? A tumor is a lump or a growth that can be either benign or malignant. If it's benign, it grows slowly and it does not spread. But if it's malignant, it can grow much quicker, uncontrollably, and it has a tendency of its ability to spread to other parts of the body. Now, there are solid tumor cancers and hematological cancers or blood cancers. The solid tumor cancers are like the ones you would see with breast, colorectal, lung. There's an actual mass. Versus hematological cancers, these are the leukemias, lymphomas, myelomas. But for the purposes of the exam, we're going to focus on solid tumor cancers. Cancer staging. It's the process of determining how much cancer there is within the body and if it has spread. This information can help with treatment and prognosis. This picture you see here, it's a picture of a bladder, but the same concept applies to other organs such as lung, liver, rectum. You will see that we have stages zero through four. Zero, no cancer. Stage one, it's localized. Stage two is early locally advanced, so it's bigger in size. Stage three, it's late locally advanced, and now we have stage four, which is metastatic cancer. Metastasis means that it has left its origin and it has spread to other parts of the body. One thing I want to uh, just mention is that once it reaches stage four, most stage four cancers are no longer curable, but rather treatable. And what that means is that we no longer look for or try to achieve a cure, but rather controlling the further spread of that cancer. So let's talk about TNM classification. This is a globally recognized standard for classifying the anatomical extent of the spread of the malignant tumors. T stands for tumor size. N is for lymph nodes or node involvement. M is for metastases. Um, what you need to know for the exam is what each letter stands for, what it means. Now, within each letter, there are subcategories, such as with T, there's TX, TIS, T0, 1, 2, 3, 4, which talks about the size of the tumor. Clearly, the smaller it is, the smaller the tumor size. N is for lymph node involvement. When a mass, such as the ones we would see on breast cancer, for example, because cancer likes to spread, the most common uh, ways that cancer will spread, it's either through the circulatory system or the lymphatic system. Think of it as transporters. So we commonly will further assess a cancer, such as with breast cancer, by checking the surrounding lymph nodes, uh, in this case, the axillary lymph nodes, which are proximal to that cancer. If we find cancer in the lymph nodes by a biopsy, 
It lets us know that the cancer has left its origin, the breast, and it has already reached the lymph nodes. The question is now, has it spread further into other parts of the body? That's when oncologists will order additional imaging to assess the extent of the cancer to other parts of the body. But that's why it's so important to check lymph nodes. Cancer staging examples. First, T1 N0 M0. T1 means that the tumor size is less than two centimeters, small cancer. N0, no lymph nodes involved. M0, no metastases. Now, second example, T4, N1, M1. T4 means that the cancer has spread or has grown so much that it has already affected the adjacent organs or tissues, surrounding tissues. N1, it has already metastasized or spread to lymph nodes. And M1, it has metastasized or spread to other parts of the body. Um, you will not be asked to stage a cancer, but again, it is your job to comprehend what each letter stands for and what it means. There are other staging systems uh, depending on the cancer, such as Ann Arbor for Hodgkin's lymphoma, there's Dukes for colorectal, and Clark and Burslow for melanoma. But for the purposes of the nurse practitioner boards, focus on the TNAM staging. And ladies and gentlemen, that is the basics of cancer and cancer staging for the nurse practitioner boards. It is crucial for nurse practitioners to understand the interpretation of tumor staging, including the TNM system, as it will equip you with the basic tools to comprehend cancer terminology better. This blog aims to review the fundamental principles of cancer staging to help the nurse practitioner better understand it for the nurse practitioner board. On a personal note, I have been working with cancer and cancer patients for about 13 years now, and I can say that uh, it's been challenging, but certainly an en enriching journey. Each day presents with new opportunities to make a difference in people's lives, navigating through their most difficult times with compassion and care. This path, while demanding, it's one that I wholeheartedly recommend for its profound ability to impact people's lives. The resilience, courage, and strength I witness in my patients continuously inspires me, reminding me of the power of human spirit and hope. And for those affected uh, by cancer, know that you're not alone. This journey is one of immense courage, and there is a community uh, ready to support you and uplift you and walk every step along the way with you. Please consider me as part of this community. If you ever want to share your story or if you have any more questions about cancer, feel free to reach out to me at any point. And for everyone, I wish you the best of luck with your studies.